Brain on. Here we are, Sam Michael, more, or sorry, one. Um, oh, and uh, uh, Puneet, um, who's been joining us for some of the videos, sees Hangouts recently, is um, he's started getting set up with us at one. Trying to have a go there. Anyway, so um, uh, <coughs> we are, we are, um, what are we doing? Apart from procrastinating on other things. Um, so yeah, so I spent some more time on this last night. Um, and I got further. Uh, halfway through, I, I completed all the things in the root in the feature directory, and then halfway through the users thing, um, as you noted, there was at least one CI failure on one of the various things. That sort of part of the plan was, you know, by doing it one at a time, it generates the number of things so that we can actually see what's going on. I mean, that that that's that's disappointing. Um, I don't think you're all the way through all the features, though. No, no. Well. Uh, I think if you look at that branch, I'm not saying I've done all the features. I'm saying that though, but here. I mean, all the features in the in the regular directory, right? I think so. I think here. Oh no, no, that's that's that. No. No, have I missed anything that's in the main Public directory? Activity, remind, complete, profile, oh, sidebar, <laughs> Oh, maybe I've just. Well, that's you know, of course, entirely possible. I, I had thought the reason I'd started on the users thing is because I thought I had. Um, Oh, I I'm going to miss loads of ones. That would be really stupid. Well, anyway, features. Oh, that does seem like I, well, I don't know. I think I must have been looking at the step definitions and, and go, okay, well, anyway. Yeah, I, well, I've done Project Pivotal stories. Okay, and I, I've, okay, I haven't done Project Videos features. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. I think I've got there, and then I think I've gone and looked at the step definitions and seen, oh, some, I don't know what I've done. Anyway, I did several more from, uh, so I could start on project videos. You could, um, uh, and I think we, we definitely want to finish this. The, the problem that I ran into, though, after that, was that uh, working through the users thing, and, and there's no particular reason to go there or, or not there or what have you, is I've got two, um, at least two things here which are failing and that I couldn't quite get to the bottom of, that maybe we should look at together in order to make progress. <coughs> Um, so the features that I was just working on here, so this is now here. Oh, well, I was kind of working on a little cluster of them. So I've got um, the password reset feature. That was fine. Then profile feature, right, this one. This one fails. Um, I, I guess, yeah, let's, let's bring it out and run that. So. Um, boom, 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 boom. So this is profile feature 24. And this one, it's looking for the presence of the word Sweden. This, uh, I've, I've, uh, I've never, um, what's happened there? Parser errors. Oh, okay. Can I just delete that line? I can. Uh, is that now 24, 23? Um, so I, I've never seen this fail before. It uh -huh. is failing on the not being seeing Sweden in it. I mean, this is like its user profile pages. Yeah, so here we go. So it doesn't find the text Sweden um, uh -huh. there. Now, we seem to have, I think, in our helpers, the only place, I mean, I've searched the whole code base, the only place that we have uh, mentioning Sweden is is here um, in this create visitor. I'm also aware there's kind of like, was there some geocoding stuff that was stubbed somewhere or what have you? Is there something there? Um, but anyway, so this, this stuff doesn't seem to be. If we look at the, um, you know, the. If we look at this thing, there's nothing in the description here right. that mentions that Sweden or Europe, Stockholm would appear. Go on. So, Alice, so is there a. What about with that step? What happens with that step? Uh, which, which one? Just. Something should exist. 
Yeah. Oh, you mean on. I mean this one? Go, go to that step where that's being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's fatter girl. Um. Okay, so that implies probably that. Okay, that is not the right uh, factory girl. Okay. Support, yeah. Whatever. Did now? Did we have? Is there factory girl? No, I want to be in features. I know. I mean, it's usually in spec, but that wouldn't probably be. Which we didn't touch, but um. I know the users, right? <laughs> So we've got factories and we've got users. Interesting. And none of that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, I think what it is 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 the IP or something. Is isn't it like it 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 lists the the pay, this country by IP? Mm -hmm. Is that how it actually works? Maybe. maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Do, do you want to mute, mute your television? It's on in the background. Yeah, um, sorry. That's all right. Uh, so we're creating Alice Jones. I mean, I guess we could have a look at, in fact, the, the user profile page. Uh, well, actually, I think the way that it actually works yeah. is that it looks at the IP of the login or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then geocodes that. Right, right. I, I mean I mean I was doing some search for the terms geo throughout the code base and couldn't find I I I, I mean I was thinking that maybe there was something in the uh, cucumber features that we had oh. environment variables that we had moved. Um I mean, what contributions, projects, involvement, skills, and technologies? I mean, because we were looking at the actual, we could look be looking at the actual site, couldn't we? Um, and we look at, for example, there. Right, it's this thing here. Uh, now, where does that? What? What is? Where does that appear? Up here. Um, I've got that appearing in a different window. But so this is, it's a user summary thing. So the show page, do I have something mentioned of a summary in here? Finding path. There's a summary, summary right there. There's a did partial I... summary HTML.erv. Oh, did I? Uh, uh, right below profile, in, in profile, you know, in the, in the file editor view. So I'm in the summary up, go up to the left. You're totally in the wrong pan. Okay. Go to where the files are listed. Okay, yeah, uh, this summary thing here, right. Okay, so presenter dot country, so if presenter dot country name, and then latitude and longitude, and so on. So what what is the presenter? The presenter then, yeah, well, that's a good question. So what's the, the, the summary is then presumably pulled in in the show. Obviously, we have a presenter for yeah. a user. Presenter, presenter. So user, it's present. I, I'm not sure what that is, present user. It's a way of providing an object. Oh, okay. So we've got... It seems oh, like it's user.country name. Yeah. How is that actually set? Well, I guess what this, this presenter is doing is basically, if, if something is nil, it's just ignoring it. Um, See, uh, on line nine in the user class... Mm-hmm. It geocodes by last sign and IP. And it sets country name then. Right. So, online. Yeah, uh, see, this is the thing is, I was set, right. I, I thought, and I thought I saw something that we had. Oh, do we set a last sign in IP? Anywhere in that step? Uh, I didn't see it. If we it looked it. like there was a IP or something. Profile feature. There's a latitude. GitHub. Oh, there is a latitude and longitude. Oh, there is like a last sign. In, all right, okay. So there's last sign in IP here is set as one two seven. Okay. So there is a sign, but the, the the weird thing there was. See, I was searching for geo in here. So we've got that in the user model IP. So I I, I, th I thought there was something in in features that was. 
kind of stubbing that, but I couldn't find it. Um, so like in features, there must be somewhere support like the previous one. Let's do with IP. Uh, okay. This, this is what we haven't got. Yeah. That's what we haven't got. So that's yeah. like a geocoder config. Okay. So features, step definitions. In uh, there. Let's put it in here and have a new file geocoder.rb and slap that in there. And then in principle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, excellent. That was yeah. Uh, you want to slap a VCR tag on there? Just, I mean, I don't think it'll oh, matter. I think I have one at the top. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Now that's interesting. That the V. I guess the V was the. Um, hey, Kuni. Um, the interesting thing is that we have the VCR on there, and it the VCR is not wrapping whatever the geocoder does. Do you know what I mean? I, and I guess that's because the geocoder is... doesn't actually geo it doesn't actually make a call, right, probably. Well mm, I would have thought that it but like it like if we've just stubbed this and it's pulling data out of there, then in the absence of this stub, it must it have hit have, something. It should have hit something, right? Right. But Maybe it's doing it not at the HTTP level, and maybe the VCR is only hitting the HTTP. I don't know. It's no. Enough. Well, that's just. I think that's um, uh, just in interesting to note because uh, that that implies a potential. Anyway, so that the other thing that was then failing was uh, so there's Sweden, and then there was this thing. Okay, this is about Alice's this is pr privacy of profile pages. Um, okay, yeah, which. Fails with, with slowness, slowness. Uh, it should be not twenty. Um, we can look at the the error. And there's not that many profile feature. Uh, close others. We don't have a profile feature in here. Profile privacy feature on line twenty. So. We've got Alice's profile page, which is the display profile is false. And it's like, and I visit Alice's profile page, then I should not see Alice Jones. Um, yeah, so we get this, failed, and basically we're getting an active record error, right? That it's like, I mean, this, this just seems sort of odd because it's like, yeah, right, it's a, it's, it's sensibly, uh, let's move that out of the way. Uh, sensibly. I missed what was going on. Yeah, so so we've got here we've got this one test um, that has I guess maybe, this one test is checking the situation where the errors. Didn't we delete that? Uh, I don't think. Oh, well, let's have a look. I think we deleted that hook. Perhaps we did. And right. I was doing something, and oh, we yeah. the background stop yesterday. Now, which was the one that we did? That we move, removed that from? Uh, um, custom errors dot feature probably. Yeah. So then that has yeah a background step. Of yeah, the background step is what you need. So, <laughs> an interesting question there about whether that's better as a back. I I, I think. Okay. I mean, it's interesting that they had a, in that one feature both the tag and the background stuff. You know, like like that redundancy they had in the feature. Yeah, they had right both both the tag and yes, they were yes. both kind of the same thing. They they were there was a, there was a duplication there that it, and it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting question. I mean, I mean, I can see that I can make arguments both for, for and against. Anyway, so that's, let's just do that. 
So, but in principle, let's just run BEC there. Um, oh, well, that's... It got quite late, and I just sort of got stuck on, on those. Yeah, okay, so that's annoying. Annoyingly, I thought I had finished these, but so I guess we've got... How many more have we got? Um, Four or five in that folder. Yeah, so there's, like, project videos, public activity, remind complete profile feature, sidebar tabs, user status, yeah, and then there's... No, well, there's not so many left. I don't know, it would be. So, I would so love to be able to get this all completed before lunch. Um, and, and I guess you know, given the sandboxing and that, you know, we still get that failure. It makes me. I still think we should finish this, but it makes me lean towards that we need like an intermittent JS tag that will just cause those ones not to run on CI. Um, Maybe may the way to go. Or, or, I mean, uh, Free Ranger is actually talking in some detail about some of these ones that were failing and about how he thinks there's something about the way in which it selects a checkbox or a radio button that um, is kind of is kind of weird. And um, uh-huh. Well, I think it's more sta- it seems more stable than it was. Okay, yeah, that, that's... Yeah. I don't know whether that's just, you know... Random variation on revert to the mean or whatever, you know, regress to the mean. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think you know we have a. I mean, we we have upgraded the gems. Um, with the, the sandboxing should reduce the level of variation. Because I'm not really seeing like a ran an intermittent failure yet. Local. Oh, you, yeah, you, oh, you haven't encountered one locally yet. No, I've encountered one, and we've had one on on CI. Uh. Yeah, well, I, I think it's it, it, it's it good. It seemed like it was failing like a lot, like a lot more frequently, is what it it's been impression that I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is this is the annoying thing with um the, this sort of uh, setup. I mean, there might be you know multiple things going on, like Free Ranger said, there might be something weird about the way that we're testing certain features. I think there's definitely weird things going on. And I guess the, the, my argument to him has been to say, well, let's, you know, when we, when it really isn't making sense, let's lock down all the stuff. So this is like yeah. ads back in passwords, uh, reset profile. I think we profile. inbox everything like this and just get through yeah. this. Yeah. Um, uh, privacy features... Uh, get push origin status six. Uh, this is clean room approach. Um, oh, Planet, did the um, dot n thing fix your charge activity failure? Uh, no, I didn't test it actually. I okay. tested oh, no. it the evening. Um, no okay, so Michael, you could pull that out and I guess then either carry on through the users directory or you could go to the Project videos, features, feature, whatever you fancy, I guess. Um, how many more have we got left in the users directory to add? Yeah, the, the users we've got. Well, am I not doing these in order? Oh no, I guess I'm halfway through. Having done profile privacy, we're now there's like three, four, five, six. There's seven left in the users directory. I guess I'll finish, keep working on those. Uh, okay, so it's a sign-in uh, feature, isn't it? Uh, mm. Profile, profile, privacy? I've done, I think that, that that's done. I, I just did password reset profile and profile privacy all together. So you should have those so three. Sign-in feature is the next one. Sign-in feature is the next one, yeah. Um, which pleasingly doesn't have any JavaScript tags in it. I'm just running the cukes right now. Cool. That's, that's sensible. Um, I mean, at least for me locally, it's a lot more stable than it was. Yes. Yes. I mean, it it, it and it potentially a big improvement. And I, and I think it's in some ways, yeah. It's it's like if it goes from like failing, you know, thirty percent on the time of the time on on developers' machines to to like three percent of the time on developers' machines, then that makes you know, your life a lot easier for the for the developers, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just looking to see how many JavaScript things we've got uh, in the remaining. The minute we've got. I mean, so we had to burn several days on it. Yes, it's well, yeah. 
Although, I mean, at the same time, it is it is giving us a good overview of what different features what are there, and the the, the, yeah. the code base and, and and so on. Um, I mean, I almost wonder for speed could 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 we be working on this in parallel? Like, could I be doing potentially? Uh, I guess it's always a risk, isn't it? Um, it's a risk if something blows up. Yeah, and we get a we get a conflict and that and that. Probably, I think let's let's stay focused on. On, on your thing, so you're gonna yeah you're gonna add in um, I'm add it once this finishes. Yeah, and I think we've already got we've already got the user steps in there. So one thing I got into last night was I end up um, do it started doing a lot of stuff with Nano just to save time on the um, when things go fast just to save time on the Ruby line. Yeah, so sign in feature, VCR at the top. Uh, so yeah, and let's run exactly that feature. You don't know, so sign. There should be only oh, tap and feature get it. I thought it would have tap and put it, but is it in the right place? Did you put it in the features directory instead of yeah, the users directory? Actually. Uh, did I put it in the wrong? Yeah, uh, I, I I did that several times last night. Mm hmm. <laughs> so that passed. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and get status. Have we got anything? No. And I did put VCR at the top. Yeah, great. Well, then that's done. And well, I mean, what I would say there is, um, just, run the whole, yeah, run, run the whole thing and, and grab the next one. I mean, that's what I started. Once it starts to go smoothly, like I mean, I, you know, do do three, you know, do do the sign outs, do do like a few, and and. Uh, boom, 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 boom. So when we actually compress this all and get the yeah. actual diff up, we should be able to see if we missed anything because it'll just be deleted, right? Yeah, indeed. So you're waiting for the BC to finish? You yeah, add that VCR. At the top there. Skills out to the. It takes a little while for the whole suite to run. Mm -hmm. Well, you could you could even stop. Pulling well, yeah. You could stop pulling in the next. Um, uh, I'm just looking at it right now, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Get All right. Do you get status there? Just yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. And then we do uh, sign out. Oh, we not run that. Run, run that individually yet. Right. And then what's the, what's this next one? Skills. Skills. Right. So that whole thing passed. I'm going to run the whole suite. Mm -hmm. I guess ideally you do get status before the um, whole suite runs, but it's not to worry. 
not a big, not a biggie. I mean, the, these ones here, we don't, we don't seem to. I mean, th there's almost there's very few JavaScript things, and actually, we've already got the cache is covering a lot of the um, stuff. So, do we ever get to the bottom of this require? You said it was. Uh, it, it was. I, I kind of tracked it down to a particular. Oh, I think it's Discus. That was the th Discus, or what, uh, the Discus plugin yeah. is using RequireJS. Um, so it's sort of slightly out of our control. Which uh, apparently isn't being used for some reason. Well, the Discus, I, I think it's working in some parts of the site. Um, and I, but I don't think anybody's posted anything to it for a while. I mean, the main thing, the way, main way I, I encounter the Discus thing is whenever I create. A new client meeting page for the beta sources is yeah. when I edit it, it I, I get a thing saying, "Oh, Discus comments couldn't be loaded, and it's all stuck." Um, so, but th there's other places where, as far as I can tell, it seems to be working. So, like the basically the place document that, it where it's not working, and then yeah. I mean, I I, I filed a bug report some time back. I mean, I can see, for example, on the project workflow documents. Page in um, uh, website one projects. Uh, you know, there's like, you know, it's got the, this is the Discus plugin here, and then you can huh. see. I mean, basically from, uh, ooh, you know, that there, there are Discus, but basically there, there, there were people using as recently as a year ago. But it's I think Slack has kind of killed it, to be honest, really. Um, anyway. All right. Well. How's your Git status there? Good. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, did you run the skills feature yet? No, I didn't run it. Yeah. yeah. So it's not really worth. Investing the time, probably. I think. I think. Everything else we could do. You mean in terms of removing discus? Yeah, in terms of getting discus stable. Well, it's interesting. I mean, I think the interesting thing we've got a series of comments about discus tests. So, um, you know, if we could get this finished and you know it merge with develop uh, one way or the other. Then I'd almost have, you know, could spend half an hour like uncommenting the discus tests and seeing if they could pass and seeing if that's related to what have you. But but to be honest, yeah, I mean, uh, that what if we can get this, you know, basically sandboxing and cleaning of the environment variables done, um, I, I I think we've got to switch back quickly to the edX UI flow. And get the um, filtering and all that. I think filtering and then and then and particularly we need to. There's the uh, time zone bug thing, um, and and just sort of yeah, make sure that we've. Uh, well, that starts what the end of May, so we still have like a month. Yeah, month. although the but but uh, in principle, so the the AV12 course is starting, and then the students in the AV12 course need to be practicing. On under, that flow needs to be there and kind of working for them to um, uh. to use. I and mean, we've got a little bit of space. It's just um, you know it, it's all doable. But then, but basically, I, I don't want to spend side time on nice to have. Oh yeah, it'd be nice yeah, to have because right. it's working or it was removed completely or what have you. Yeah, I don't want to burn time on nice to have when there's like you know things that should be should be central. I don't know. It's uh, so you've got the skills thing in users. We you were you were starting on the user bio, were you? Yeah, got that loaded. There's a JavaScript here, so yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, th- th- they've all been pretty uh, untoward. I mean, yeah, if you can get to the end of the... Um, uh, user videos. If we can get to the end of the user things and then Pong and I can get the rest of them in, that would be... All right. Um, user bio. So it's clean. Then we'll just run user bio. Yeah. Yes, of course, well, what we are doing here is by running these, the, the, the BECs each time, it, it, it certainly, you, you, in the past, I, I, it certainly felt like you were getting more failures locally for yourself. Yes. Yeah. So, user bio and then user list. There's a whole series of potential refactorings. What in the what is that doing? Where these things are made less declarative. Yeah, uh, you mean less imperative? Yeah, less imperative and more more declarative. Yeah, like the domain language or whatever. Absolutely. Yes. I was talking to Piotr about that this morning. Yes, it's an interesting... I mean, I, sp- I spent... I had quite a lot of fun at one point refactoring Cucumber in, in um, local support. It's, 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 I mean, even in these sort of relatively low-intensity projects, it's, it's, it's difficult to prioritize that. Um, but yes, I, I mean, that, that, that's... What I was thinking about with the domain statement recently is that actually if the... What would be nice would be if the domain statement itself was actually sort of a test of, like, if you could almost, if you could be boiling the cucumber down sufficiently so that the cucumber would actually describe it was a set of statements about the domain. Right, yeah. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? Um, I think that's the ideal, I guess. Yeah. And I, I showed the local support domain statement to Rachel, and uh, she was like, that, that sounds right, and she mentioned this other kind of user that we've got, um, which I should add in. The uh, site admin? The... Site like, admin. I, I, is, is it site admin? Maybe it is. It's the site admin and then the super admin, because the site admin has like... Site admin is the one that she had me do. Right, which it, which is for the volunteers who are working, who need to be able to edit a few stuff, but they don't. Want, she doesn't want to give them complete super admin. I, I know that the um, uh, the Met Plus guys are using CanCan to do their roles and permissions or what. There's that other one that someone mentioned. I forget. Oh yeah. It seemed really small. Hmm. Uh, someone mentioned it. Hmm. Forget. Yeah, it. I don't remember that. They mentioned it on Slack at some point. And okay. maybe, maybe on GitHub. Oh, was that was that Marowen mentioned that? Or something? I don't know. Anyway. And Jonathan I mean, liked it. Yeah. I mean, I think at the moment, like, you know, it's kind of like the, the within local support, it feels like there's not a big rush to create lots of new kinds of users. You know, that, that, that that's... that's um, I mean, the, the strategic direction from Rachel seems to be this idea that maybe the, that not just do it, we can pull in data from various other sources. I mean, how many of those sources actually have APIs is another matter. But... Sure. Uh, so did that was user list feature ran without incident then? Yes. And I, yep. So now I'm running all of them again. Right. So we've got to user management and user videos. I'll be back in a sec. Give me two minutes. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Use management went okay then? Uh, there's some cash stuff. Okay. So we could potentially rerun it? Yeah, just run that individual one, I would, rather than the whole set of them, yeah. Just uh, rerun it and check that it's stable. Wait, so I run. Oh, okay, okay. User management feature. Mm hmm. I had failed to run just that individual one, so mm. and then I ran it in batch, and then there was. Well, we'll say. Yeah. So there was what, 15, 16? Okay, it's so still. It seems That's stable. fine. Well, why don't just go ahead and add that last user videos one then, and then. Um, if you've so already. That was user management. Yeah. And then what is left? User user videos. User videos. User video. No. Seventeen. Yeah, and so that no, that's there because you've added the additional file. Yep. Yeah, and then we've only got two or three features in each of events and uh, hookups. And we're on DC. Run get status. So we do have more now. Yeah, and this this is a, there was another single uh, JavaScript thing. So probably run that one. Um, that really again? Just just run the user videos again. Yeah, just uh, to check that that's that cache is stable. Yeah, twenty four. Okay. Right. Uh, well that, okay. Yeah, that's it. So that's well, you run could run. You could, I could just run them all. Just to, you could. Uh, and then I'll after that passes and this cache is the same, I'll commit. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, and I, I guess I'll get ready to work on what's the next one that works with. There we go. So I've got project pivotal stories dot feature, but I didn't get. Is it? Project videos feature. We've got a build. Now having a look here on the CI, what's the 
Okay. We've also got like the CI is failing from um, like gem network timeouts, which is maybe which is annoying because it maybe obscures some stuff. That yeah. We, but, but who knows? Anyway. Um, Sometimes that happens with CI with bundle. Yeah. Yeah. With downloading everything every time, isn't it? Um, but you can just restart it, right? Yeah. No, that's what we've done. Um, okay, so I'm grabbing projects videos feature. Um, yeah, and so yeah, what I've got in thing is doing like nano features. And this is uh, projects uh, videos dot feature. Um, slap that in there. Uh, I can go back up to the top, add in a little at VCR control that. So I've got a project videos featured. Now there's this let's look at any step definitions that might be associated with that project videos which is step definitions. We've already got the product steps and the YouTube steps in there. Uh, step definitions project steps YouTube steps yes I'm just waiting for your code I guess I can even it stops me from running this is things having edited it with nano on the command line we got yeah. more now you got more um, yes four more oh, okay so what ones are they? If you just do get status by itself, they're the YouTube ones. Okay. Should we just have a look at the contents of some of the YouTube ones? Click on here, features. Quest cash, right? Yeah. Right, so these are just well. Let's let's go through and have a look at. They're just video YouTube's with particular IDs. Some of these version versions on them. I mean, if they're all unique, I mean, it may be just that. I wonder if that implies that um, something to do with the. Um, I wonder if that implies that between the tests, like when they're running together, it's kind of, um, uh, I mean, what, I, I would say for you, kick off a BEC again and see if you get even more or if it's now stable. It kind of makes me wonder if, yeah, that, that sort of feels like it's like, I don't know, they're not they're not sequential. We've got like this that's from twelve and like one five nine. Um, 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 one I mean, it sort of feels like the BC we're we're running the things together, and it's maybe ending up with slightly different IDs. Do you know what I mean? Like like you can imagine yeah. like just in a simpler situation that you had two tests, and 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 if they were both relying on the same database, and the database wasn't being cleared properly, yeah, you'd end up when you ran them in batch with one of them. Doing requests with with slightly higher IDs, or something. I don't know. Yeah. Makes sense. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, usually the database cleaner works pretty well. I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wonder here in this context if there's something something more complex going on in that uh, we've got this. I think these these two the ones that you just added. They, well, given I have some videos on Project Hello, Hello World, user management, uh, well, it's this, it's this, oh, user, user videos, user video, well, the user videos one, yeah, the, the step definition here is it's like, given I have some videos on Project Hello World, so have a look at what that, that does on line 41, no, no, sorry, line 40, um, 
the project blank has three videos of user may. So there's a step. So that's going to a different. The project has yeah. So that's the it's, it's the what is the step below, isn't it? Um, see, it's got factory girl there, and it's like creating. See, I mean, I wonder is fact if we if we're creating things with Factory Girl in Cucumber, right? Is is it being cleaned at all in bat runs? Because Pretty I, I sure. well, the thing is though is that we've we've got the Factory Girl we've got no Factory Girl configuration for Cucumber, and all the Factory Girl that we're sort of I I, I assume that it's accessing I mean how does it even how does the cucumber environment know to access factory girl is that I think an, is an interesting question it's, like 28. Uh, it's stable now yeah I had a feeling it might be do you want to check it and pass it over to me um, we do have that we do have database cleaner set up in our environment variable uh, on a transaction um, Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I might, I, I guess, is, but so, you know, there's a question of like, how does database cleaner interact with Factory Girl? Hmm. I mean, it feels like there there must be some uh, kind of do we have a there we have push that. right thanks yeah and we have. I'm just I'm just reading here about apparently there's um there's factory girl step definitions for cucumber, which is which is for a long time ago, that's from two thousand nine, so it's completely out of date. Um uh, we've also got our we've We've got also interesting options here in cucumber.yaml, which I haven't particularly seen before. I wonder if we've got anything else mentioning about. And we've got Zeus as well. What on earth is that? Zeus apparently has a cucumber plan. No idea what that is. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Anyhow. Uh. Mm. Mm. Okay, so I've got your stuff. All right, I'm going to get it joined. Okay. It sure. I'll put this on. Uh, I guess I should be... Let's run a BC first before we run... Hmm. What am I thinking here? I'm. How does? Hmm. 
what I'm thinking is how does how does cucumber know that factory girls available so I don't understand We're clearly using Factory Girl. It's magic. Mm, yes. Isn't actually uh, features. Like, aren't Cukes really just run as some kind of spec? Uh, I mean, we're Whatever pulling in. This is like. I mean, yeah, all, all, all the step definitions have access to the R spec stuff. Although, in, in the environment variable. That we've done. I mean, of course, we're, we're using we're using cucumber rails, and so cucumber rails maybe maybe pulling in all sorts of things. Things from the spec folder. Yeah, including factories. Yeah, we do have a database cleaner. Uh, uh, okay, uh, go away. That's annoying. Is that I just tried to comment out this? Oh god! The magic! It's the magic of rails. Mm. I was just trying to run uh, the complete set of cukes on everything that you had put up before I got into dealing with project videos. It's going. Are they releasing? I mean, when is Rails Five coming out? Is it already out? I don't know. Um, they, they started hearing sort of chats about it. Um, yeah, but people have been talking about it for like a year. Yeah. Uh, I felt like it was supposed to be out like last fall. Is one. Oh, really? <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Hmm. But it's still kind of like in. The... Well, they've got like beta three release candidate one soon. Yeah. I mean, I guess the. I guess. I mean, whatever. It'll it'll come. It'll come when it comes. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, I guess. Can we see from if we look at in the gem file lock? Can we see what cucumber rails pulls in? Yeah. Mm, it's not. I feel like when you upgrade your Rails versions. Mm -hmm. You really ought to be throwing out your configs and everything. You know, like yeah, yeah, it, the yeah, because, and then going uh, through. Uh, yeah, we kind of did that for certain parts of local support. Yeah, yeah, yes. I mean, you know, there's a, a bigger scale thing of of what we've done here, which is that you know one could take uh, a, like when Rails five came out, for example. One right. could generate a new Rails five app, and then gradually add in, in individual right. features. Driven right. from the BDD point of view, would be a, um, uh, and then that would potentially be make it easier to like leave stuff out that you did not want to include. Um, well, didn't you say you wanted to just totally ditch Rails and local support last year? Uh, well, you mean switch to a different framework? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of interested to try. You know, let's do a different. Let's do a mean stack. There, were, there wasn't. There wasn't a lot of appetite for it. And I guess now, I'm kind of you know so invested in the Ruby. I mean, it would be nice to be doing some. I, I guess I'm more interested in in JavaScript front ends than I am in in JavaScript on the back end. To be honest. Uh, cool. Okay, so no, that's that sta seems to be stable from a cash point of view. That's why everything on. Where all the love is today. Well, the what is where? Sorry, I said that's where all the love is today on the JavaScript front ends. Hmm. Hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But I just had a. I mean, I don't know. I I feel like you can burn a lot of time with that. Like especially if you're yeah. not. Especially in what sort? 
I said you can burn a lot of time with JavaScript front ends because it's so changing so quickly. Oh, well, ah, right. Yeah, you can like just, if you're not like I don't know if you're not like in the valley or whatever, and you're right. not like mm-hmm. you can't just like mm-hmm. message somebody that's like yeah, be like what's going on with this? Yes. Oh, well, no. There's, de- there's definitely a lot of churn going on there. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's part of me almost the attraction of the Ruby and Rails thing is it's kind of moving slightly less quickly. Perhaps, and that's actually a, a a positive aspect. So I've got. Um, yeah, I mean, Rails is more mature. Yeah, it kind of knows what it's going to do and does it well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, one gets the sense with the JavaScript that there's. A, I mean, just like the Node libraries. I mean, there's just like it's it's a crazy, and the Node world's kind of crazy. Right? Yeah, I mean, I I, th- I think that I mean that's why I sort of come back to it. Ruby, there is. I mean, although there's lots of messy Ruby code, there's at least I think lower down in the Ruby stack within Ruby. There is a commitment to readable code, whereas JavaScript's kind of like, you know, organized by this consortium of of, of people, which I'm like, kind of like, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, anyhow, so get, so we seem to have here. This is, I guess, I'll run BC. So this is Project Videos feature. It's introduced more of these uh, hitting YouTube and asking them for. Uh, Similar thing, like here, it's looking for a YouTube video ID 51. And I guess this is, again, this is like this factory girl. You know, but I think if we adopt some kind of JavaScript front end, some of those are more stable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was feeling really positive about Angular until all this Angular 2 stuff has kind of come through, um, which which has sort of put it back up into the, to the air. I have positive things about Ember. Um, I mean, I, I guess it would. It's um, yeah. People say Ember is like the the Rails world for JavaScript front ends. Mm, mm. Big. It's trying to do a lot of things. I mean, the interesting thing for like the stuff that we're working on, let's say at the moment for the um, uh, you know, the edX UI onboarding. I mean, the, the interesting question is is like, what problem does the JavaScript front end solve for us that we don't, you know, we can't solve by other means? I mean, is it just that it ends up, you know, we're we're doing the latest stuff, and you know, it. I think it like it makes it, or like using. I don't know. John has argued to me that using, uh, like, even on local support, mm-hmm. says that based on his experience, and namely using using Fox and React, for instance, mm-hmm. it just makes the front end JavaScript more maintainable. Yeah, that that that's a, that's certainly a reason. Just like yeah. the birthday, what do they call it? Like the the sprinkles JavaScript model. Yeah, where, right, right. You just like randomly throw. Yeah, no, I I, th- I could totally it, it for there to be a consistent pattern. He said like there's not necessarily like a big bang where you're going to be no, able to no, no. Oh, when we pull this in then we're instantly going to get like the ability to do all these like crazy things no, right although i guess what i see with a lot of angular apps is there's a lot of there's a move towards you know providing single page functionality for stuff that might otherwise have been right. over a series of, of separate pages um, that's kind of the, that's the big i mean the big difference i guess with the front end apps is that they have the routers so right. they feel more mm. more responsive mm-hmm. basically to the user because they're not going through the page reload cycle. Right. Yeah. So you now here I run this in back. Although get, in a lot of mm-hmm. ways you can do you can emulate that with just Ajax. Yeah. But it's not as organized. No, well I, I mean having you know having that frame organized that out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the interesting question for me is that one can one now is there a consistent reliable way to maintain like browser state in the face of a of a single page app so that you know right if, if someone you have memory leaks and stuff people said that's important now yeah page apps i've read you know people yeah i guess the only way to find out is really to yeah well it would be nice it would be nice to i mean we there there are people in like Raul had some experience with Angular, at least. Yeah, well, I've spent I've spent some fair. I built some I built some bits and pieces in Angular. I spent some time. Uh, and, uh, 
doing front front end stuff in Java. I mean, the the, the interesting question is the 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 context yeah, in which no. to be introducing it to any of our any of the projects that we're currently working on. Like, I mean, it would be, you know, as we got further, for project example, into Unify has basically Angular's brother, Ionic. Well, and it's using uh, yeah. I mean, I think as part of Project Unify, Thomas is doing a lot of Angular and Ionic stuff at the moment. Um, I mean, Angular Ionic's basically Angular. To be compiled to a, you know, yeah, yeah. that's right, to a phone app. That's right. Of course, then, then, then they're like, oh, okay, like Ionic two is going to come out, and that's going to be based in Angular two, and there's like a lot of changes and so on. But, but, uh, I mean, I think it would be. I mean, there is, there is, actually, in local support, I would say that the admin front end is, could be in something. Yeah. Is is the place where the, there there are some some serious edit uh, so UI shortcomings. There. John and I discussed that that yeah. we could potentially put. I mean, at some point, though, really, honestly, like in the next few years, uh -huh. I don't know how long we're going to be doing local support, but uh -huh. I think we're coming up to where like you're going to have. I mean, the browsers are going to be so out of date. Like already, like. The browsers that we s committed to support th three years ago are kind of yeah. Like, oh yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I, I think we're moving to to the point. Yeah, absolutely. The the I mean, and it's interesting. Like the stuff that 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 Armando has in the was that thirty five before? Uh, yeah, it's stabilized. Okay. Um, I mean, the stuff that um, Armando was talking about about you know graceful degrad degradation, like when you don't have JavaScript. You know, behaving correctly. I mean, the whole premise of like Angular and everything is that they just they 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 don't do they, they they don't because if JavaScript they just don't work at all. But it's getting to the point where yeah, you just assume everybody has JavaScript and it's yeah, it's it's definitely going that way. Um, um, I think they're go they have. I mean, they have to do it to stay. You know, to to, to deliver the features or whatever. Well. Uh, when you say that they I mean, have to, the down, see, you could theoretically build like a like a graceful degradation website, right? But you're basically building two apps to to a degree. Well, what I, I think more the case though is that the, the older browsers that didn't support JavaScript they're just they're just not being used anymore. They're not being used anymore. And, and I mean, basically, the machines that they were on are kind of dying, and so the machines. Even if there are some like diehards hanging on to the older browsers, once the machine dies, you know they're not going to pull that software over and like be using IE IE six on the thing. They're going to end up getting a new computer and 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 so on. Yeah. So it's kind of it ends up being that yeah you know just it, it, it is JavaScript and you know. uh, so yeah well that this one was not a big deal. I should just pull in the next one, which is so we had projects. We have project videos. We've done project. We've got projects feature in there. That's why I was getting confused because we we've done some of the other ones. Sort of. So projects. Uh, so after that, we got public activity feature. What's well, interesting, at least in the U.S., the government, uh, mm -hmm. like our federal government. Yeah. Somebody who works in the federal government, he was saying that they were looking for. They had heard about the boot camps or whatever. Oh yeah. And they were. They said, "Oh, maybe we'll hire people from boot camps or whatever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. into the government." And the guy that I know is kind of in charge of like researching that idea or whatever yeah. for the for this one department or whatever. Okay. And he said the thing that they didn't like was that they're all Ruby. And right. Like, the federal government in the United States. Mm -hmm has a buy like they have this bias against ruby mm -hmm. and they like python which i find hilarious because python and ruby are kind of like mm -hmm. the same it's like which flavor of vanilla do you like right right <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah 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 indeed indeed yes it's interesting i mean of course edx is all on um python um but I mean, yeah. when I write, like I, I sometimes write stuff in Python for different things, and it feels like oh, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty like Ruby. You know what I mean? Yes, it's pretty, it's pretty damn. You know, it's like it's in the same. 
bunch of things. So we've got some step definitions here. Uh, they all look like the kind of given I am on the activity feed. Um, oh, is it activity feed steps? Looks like it is. Yeah, okay. See, so we've got that in the activity feed steps, we've got stuff like and I edit article and and stuff. And, yeah. So this is, is activity feed steps? Is that what it is? Activity feed steps. Uh, step definitions, new file, activity feed steps, dot rb, okay. I guess what I could be doing to try and cut down on the YouTube things is those YouTube things we were having, we could be putting like, I could be trying to add that some of that syntax into the, um, well, I guess let's not play with it right now. Uh, okay, so that works. Um, blah, 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 blah. It's okay, let's run BC. Yeah, I mean, hypothetically, I don't know, I'm still, I'm very, I'm suspicious of what, um, Like it, it, you know, it could go into here as a kind of like the stuff that comes. It just shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, I think that the interesting thing with the boot camps is uh, how is, is is underscore like a special character in Regex. Uh, I don't know offhand. Um. Underscores a JavaScript library, the name of it. But... Mm. Special characters minus one. No, it looks like it's not. Well, it's not according to this thing I found online. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the, the boot camps are an interesting phenomenon, particularly because I have a friend who um, did like a kind of a database boot camp, like like 10, 12 years ago, and did like a 12 week course and got, you know, so it's, it's I think the boot camps are not new per se. But there's something, obviously, there's been a big, you know, growth in them. And there's just, there's something about, like, really just sitting down hardcore and just working on coding for 12 weeks, which is something that, like, sometimes people get when they do computer science degrees. But sometimes they don't. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they just, it's like, the, 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 there's, some, there's, they, there's like this breakthrough point when you really actually spent enough time coding with something. And of course, that, that, that still doesn't make you... Um, like magically a, an awesome coder, but it, it's kind of like catching the bug, as it were, in, in, in you know, re really kind of starting to enjoy coding. And, um, mm, mm. No, I don't know, I mean, the, the whole, the whole, I mean, government, I'm, you know, working with the local government here, I mean, it, it, it's all, well, well I think the, there's, a, there's a point where in the early, that people get really intimidated by errors or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there's kind of a point after a while that people start to get comfortable with the errors in their language or whatever. Right, right. And and, and they're then also kind of like, oh, well, this is kind of an interesting, right, let, let's, and, and they get confident with like experimenting with different ways of trying to get to the bottom of them. And and then it becomes, you know, yeah, much less of a big deal. Mm -hmm. So, you said in, in your sure. country there's something with the government. Oh, well, I mean, I, th th we're doing stuff with the local government here as part of local support thing. And they've asked, like, if we want, could we do a hack day? Um, which, yeah, I heard about that, yeah. Yeah, which is kind of, yeah, yeah. And, and so, I don't know. They're, 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 I, think they're, I mean, just government and large organizations all, all seem to be about moving really slowly and just like, I, I don't know. Um, uh, Anyway, I'm just going to try and throw, throw in here. We've got, I got, we've got remind. What we've got here, we've got remind complete profile feature. Uh, nano features remind complete profile dot feature. Um,
it would sort of it would be nice if um, lots of systems were more more kind of agile. Um, interesting. Although the recent trip to the dentist, they've replaced all of their paperwork with um, uh, uh, iPads. All, yeah. all, all iPads. Um, which interestingly, so that the people on the on the desk were like, "Oh, it's such, it's great," and the dentist was like, "Oh God, it's awful." <laughs> it was like, uh, interesting, uh, lopsided stakeholder. A lot of, I don't know. A lot of businesses want to just buy something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think it does feel like we're going. That there's a. I mean, we're we're going through something that's a bit like the the changes that took place with the printing press where suddenly people could have printed documents that much more easily like yeah. um and of course at the beginning there would i'm sure there was problems where the printing press was like you know oh let's use this and there was like those of printed out and it's like this doesn't make any sense from what we're doing or whatever and there's this you know but i mean my fr like my friend one of my friends was a consultant or whatever mm -hmm. and he said like especially in the midwest of the united states mm -hmm. so they got all these consulting jobs where they mm -hmm. went out, right? Uh huh. And like this company was like, oh, we dropped, we, you know, our executive or whatever mm -hmm. was wooed into buying the software. Right. Whatever it was, this whiz bang software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like $2 million. Yeah. And it was going to solve everything. Right, right. And, and then, then like they bought it and they got it. And, and then like, Nobody knew how to use it, and nobody right, right. was interested in how to use it. So it just sat there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And didn't do anything. Yeah. And then, like, a year later, the executives were like, what did you do with this? And then they found out that, like, nobody, like, actually used it. Yeah, right. And then they were like, oh, well, that's, that's problematic because we spent, like, all this money on it, and now I have to, <clears throat> now I have to justify it, you know? So Right my bosses and the shareholders yeah yeah yeah. But then they bring in these like consultants to like train people uh-huh on how to use the software that was supposed to be a cure-all right 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 and there's a lot of companies that chronically yeah it's, it sounds like they buy like yeah. just bring in consultants yes to like do everything for them basically yes Yes, and it, and it, it 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 sounds like a familiar story. I think it. I mean, it's like the the, the UK. We have you know the National Health Service, and they spent like seven billion on on a new computer system that just died, you know, and just ended up. It's just just. I mean, it's insane. But uh, and, and I I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm glib maybe. It, it feels like the whole the whole problem is that you know is it's about approaching it and saying like let's push technology on these people rather than actually studying what the people actually need and then you know um working out how technology or maybe something else you know but there's not necessarily i mean i think at the bottom of it there's not necessarily like the problem is that actually solving their problem in an efficient way is not necessarily the most profitable thing to do uh well certainly not in the short term if you can convince them to spend a lot of money on software they can convince them to spend a lot of money on your software yeah, then then actually solving their problem. And, and the, the the funny thing is, there's so much wiggle room because if a, if a if a business has got a reasonable profit margin, uh, the time that it takes to work out that when they burned a lot of money on something is, yeah, nah. Um, okay, I I'm now getting confused about where I think. Have I even copied a new thing? I have. I've got si I've got a sidebar feature in here. Um, All right. Um, but this is partly what I'm sort of saying saying to Ch Charles is like, you know, trying to work out what it is that Agile Ventures does. And I'm trying to, trying to you know, and he's saying like, so, you know, what um, CRM software would you recommend to to this person or that person? I'm saying it's like, well, you know, first I want to work out is, is actually CRM software what they need, you know, right. and, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, okay, so what we've got here, we've now got this is remind completes no, I'm just doing it with nano so I can do this and go back and just run the BC from there. The sidebar feature. Um, but yeah, very often it's like getting to the bottom of the actual problem doesn't necessarily yeah, as I say, doesn't necessarily guarantee a profit or it's not necessarily what people want to happen. They just, you know, I don't know. 
and, and, and then it's like, and then he, like, I think, and potentially, even if you had a, like, when it's on a large scale, even if you've got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people who really, really want to, like, you know, make stuff work and make it all happen well and so on, whatever, just the, um, the natural confusion from trying to coordinate people on that scale, I think, you know, leads to, can lead to total insanity without the idea that anybody's actually trying to take advantage of each other. Um, Am I just doing the sidebar feature? Yeah, so the sidebar feature has is green. We've got a we've got a tabs feature. Um that's got JavaScript at the top of it. Okay. Um I'm gonna come into over here. I'm running on the thing. Nah. Once I've once I've finished this out, then maybe we'll pong and um we can actually get the last set done. We're on the last couple. Yeah, the the, the sub the last couple of subfolders. Uh, so this is tabs dot feature. I wonder if I introduce that now, would it end up running? With, uh, so there's tabs feature. Have we already got tab steps in there? Um, we do. So there's tabs feature, and then finally it's going to be user status feature, which has got some time travel and some JavaScript put on different steps. Um, I know. I noticed we've also got kind of guard. Um, we've got the guard gem, which yeah. people talk about being able to. Because guard is like auto test, though, isn't it? I really don't know. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there is. I mean, I'm reflecting how much time we're we're spending waiting for the um, cukes to finish. There was there something about making the cukes run faster? But anyway. Um, I mean, uh, Amanda just updated one of the book chapters to, to talk about guard instead of um, auto test. Um, so what's guard and cube? Guard, cube, but automatically, you know, it's, it's just like, like auto test. Hmm. And the last time I used auto test was on Stas book. Yeah. 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 I, 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 yeah I did. It didn't work well. No, no, no. And I think auto test has died. It, it's, it's died a death. Um, and this, like, this is Zeus. What is Zeus? I think that's supposed to speed up tests. Oh, boot uh, boot any Rails app in under a second. Zeus preloads your Rails app so that normal development tasks such as console server generate take less than a. Yeah, I mean, we, there's some. We've got the Zeus gem. Uh, might be something we want to pull in the local support at some point. Hmm. Oh, and this the spring. That's the one other one that I've heard of. Is it, the, the preloaders speeding up? Yeah, the they're supposed to speed up. You know, the... yeah. It feels a little bit like it's like one more thing to go wrong. Um, okay, so that looks that looks stable. And so the last thing we've got here is a user status feature. Oh no, no, I, ooh. yeah, but I already added. We said the tabs feature, so I'd I should run that individually here. B C features tabs feature. Um, and then after that we will be having a user status feature. Um that's clear. It looks okay. We'll run B C. Um Definitions uh, features here. So this is going to be a new one, which is going to be a user status feature. This one should also have a CR on the top. Uh, tabs feature. Ah, I didn't put VCR on the. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully that won't cause too much trouble. Mm, blah blah. But yeah, so Puneet, um, uh, I had a bit of a chat with him this morning about, I'm saying like, well, so one, you know, it's it's um, relatively complex project and, you know, we're kind of not seeing it as an entry level one and he was saying, no, I really want to work on it. And, and, you know, he's, I think he's impressed me by the fact that he's kind of been doing you know, due diligence, as it were, he's turned up in some, you know, beta sources meetings, and you know, he's been checking out all the different projects and doing, 
you know, what one sure. would sensibly be doing when, you know, trying to choose about whether to do a project. So, um, but he's, he's got, he's like on, on a Ubuntu box. And it's so not he's, that complex, really, I guess. No, it's, it's not in the scheme of things. I mean, I think both, neither of, none oh, of yeah. our projects are that, are that big scale, but I think that there's, um, you know, there, there's having some, depending on person's confidence level, having yeah. somebody come in and then like, they're trying to get set up and they're trying to work on an individual feature and you could spend a, you know, a day's worth of time helping them on that feature. Right. And maybe you get to a reasonable solution, but it's, it's, it's moving very slowly. And it's, it, it's, I guess, yeah, the complexity of one side or another is another thing. It's more that the urgency with which we need to deliver features on website one is the, uh, so we, we, you know, it's, uh, we, it's, I think it's dangerous for the Agile Ventures community to slow down on fixes to website one for the purpose of, uh, you know, helping people practice their skills. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Dang, you need to experience people. Yeah. Well, I, I think Not on website one. Yeah. I mean, that's, I'm still trying to work out what is the right way to describe um, that. You know, like what's the right way to get that message across? Um, okay, so that looks able. And then we've got user status feature. Yeah, I, I guess that there's another term we're using. It's a, it's, a, it's a priority project. So, yeah, or for intermediate, we could say things like it's for intermediate developers and above. Um, okay, well, this is looking. So one, well, I, what I'm tempted to do here actually is rather than London. He's not interested in local support. Uh, he doesn't seem to be. Uh, I mean, I could have pushed him more strongly in that direction. Um, uh, uh, get, uh, we have several people working on that. There, 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 yeah, there's a couple of people who are you know sticking around and getting stuff done on that. Yeah. Uh, um. Commit minus a m. This you is kind of ignore it. <laughs> well, yes, and I think that's absolutely the right thing to do at the moment. So it's back in this is a, uh, public activity. Uh, reminds complete profile sidebar tabs and user status feature. This is like Marion and trust it. Yeah, she's sort of talked about wanting to make more time, and then I, I think she's got a lot going on, hasn't she? Um, uh, she messaged me a day or two ago and said her ceiling collapsed. Oh, dear. Goodness. So there's some kind of... One thing after another. Good God. Okay. Uh, so I've just, I've just... Anyway, I just pushed up. Uh, I mean, I hadn't run a final uh, Cuke set, but... Uh, yeah, she actually uh, messaged me with a photo. <laughs> wow. Of, Likes, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, life, life happens. Um, but yeah, I think at the moment, like, right, so you pushed it. I, I, I pushed it. I mean, I, I was, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think that the, you know, local support clearly one could just be burning a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time in in various different places. The, the I think I'm I'm very happy with it, kind of ticking over. We've got a couple of people who seem quite competent working on. <laughs> individual fixes and I'm giving kind of them support and uh, sure. I think that's good. I, I think if you know the council comes through with something then um, you know potentially we will we will switch back uh, and have a bigger focus on that but like I think yeah and at least for this next couple of months I kind of would just love to have the uh, website one or our adventures running as smoothly as possible and acting as a kind of you know a nice funnel for people coming in What's happening with with, with Marouane and and, and uh, Piotr at the moment is kind of sort of exactly my idea of how you know it all works. I'm although I, and I guess in the past I was a I mean they're not pair programming with each other. I mean I, I guess it's what seems to be becoming a bit more uh, short term but a bit more stable on local support is a pattern where where I have more people working individually and then I'm kind of supporting them with comments in the pull requests and the occasional scrum rather than spending a lot of time pair programming with them. Which I think is a bit more manageable. 
And I, I think I think that then corresponds. Scott well, I had this conversation with Thomas about well, make you know, advent of premium and then two levels of advent of premium. So there's kind of like you um you can pay like a minimal level of, of premium fee, which basically kind of gets you the basic service, but then a com you get like a commitment that you know your pull request thing will be reviewed with like you'll have a professional code review within 72 hours or something. Um uh, but and then there would be another level where you'd be paying a lot more, and you would actually get, you know, pairing on the projects. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, so that that's that's green and clean on my side. Um, did you pull that out? Are you running the cubes? Yeah, I'm running, and I'm going to add the events folder. Okay, you can do events before hookups. Unless you think it should be the other way around. I, I guess just hookups we know less about, so. I, I don't think it makes too much difference. All right. Let's see, what is this? Create uh, events. And I guess, yeah, looking at the pull request, uh, yeah, it should, in, in principle, uh, I guess we're still going to have like the very large number of files changed. For all of it. It's not going to be easy to see if there's stuff that we've left out. Looking for deletes. I cherry picked in some stuff. Up there. All right, so uh, create events feature. We'll run BC. Uh, you're, you're not sharing your screen at the moment, by the way. So. Uh, I'll share my screen. There you go. Thanks. Be interesting if John paired. Mm hmm. On on any think he has on any on, on, a, on a particular project, or uh, you just mean in general? Just in general. Oh yeah. No. Well, uh, absolutely. And I think I think he's you know excited to do more, but let's say like he's like on local support, he's excited to bring in the JavaScript front end. Well, I think we, if he, I mean the, the sweet spot will be it, I mean if we could have like a stable contract from the council that would say right, look, let's just do this, and you know next three years, I think there's all sorts of really cool stuff we could do. Um, <laughs> I, even well, the, the interesting thing is what I having they suggested this hack day. The idea that I had subsequently was that oh, we could possibly be doing like a. But you have to like explain to them that one day is not going to. Oh, abso absolutely. Well, I, and I think that they need a, an inception. A real solution, you know. No, they need an inception event, and and I think if they want to hack a thon though, that that's something that we could do to prototype different solutions and that actually we could run an online hackathon for them sure. which would make a lot more sense and particularly if then there was like prizes for that online hackathon and so on it would suddenly you know and if they paid us slash me to um organize it for them then that's but uh i think i think that you know this it's like they're just sort of batting around you know, I, mean, I, I think they have they have a non-trivial chunk of money, and they you know do need to spend that over the next three years. And oh, it's just one of these juggling things where it's, it's just like they may just throw it in a completely different direction. So, uh, so how, you're, you're doing? Oh, so the events feature by itself was. Did we add VCR to that? Yes. We or did we already have it in there? Yeah, I added it. Yeah. So by itself, it passed and it, it was clean. So yeah. Well, and I mean, you could almost throw. I mean, these are ones we've worked on recently. You could almost throw all of them in together. I, I don't know. Well, I don't know, one at a time, I guess. Slow and steady wins the race, as they say. Um, Yeah, I, I can see in the um, pull request now. I, it's glad, for example, the w one feature that we have haven't added back in is the discus feature, which is the one that's commented out. Um, 
Well, it's interesting that we still do we have conflicts with um, the main branch. That's what I want to know. Ah, oh, and we don't. That's I cherry picked uh, Free Range's uh, Craft Academy banner updates in, and so we're now we're not in conflict with the base branch, which is good. All right. Okay, so that's the edit events. So that Past and clean. Mm hmm. This feels like I could write a program to do this. Yes. Well, the of course the, the tricky thing is when something goes wrong. Well, there's always that's the, always the trade off for something that's automatable is like how many times we want want to use it and how long does it take to make an automatable thing right. and wow. judging those things. Is the trick, isn't it? Uh, and then it, then it goes through. Rip, rip. What do they say? A good programmer knows how to the process for something, but an excellent programmer will automate it. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the and the really awful programmer automates it too soon before they've established that it's actually going to be something that anybody wants or needs. Need to adopt more tools, I think. Me, personally. Yeah. I kind of have like a minimalist approach. Uh huh. Where, like, I don't know, like, John, like, is enthusiastic about, like, knowing, like, every trick with them. Oh, okay. But, like, if I already know kind of like a way to do that. Right, right. Like I'm not necessarily like enthusiastic about learning another yeah. set of commands to do it slightly more efficiently. Indeed, I mean, I think I think I was like it was I was working on just this thing that we're working on now. I was I was finding it more efficient to use a combination of nano and the command line at one point, and I think that there is, yeah, there there is. I, I I'm intrigued to, to you know to do Vim development. I think it's kind of it's a bit like when I switch from Windows to Mac, you know. I would like to have kind of like a stable. Uh, I, th I think if we, you know, we, if we learn some contracts for Agile Ventures, and it's going kind of like, oh, okay, right, next three years, build this stuff for the council. I'd be like, yeah, time to learn Vim. <laughs> so I can handle the overhead. Uh, whereas I think in this situation, where it's kind of like, Ooh, or which way is it all going to go? I've, I'm less enthusi uh, enthusiastic for taking on something that might slow me down in the short term with, you know, speed ups in the long term. So that seemed to be clean. Great. Yeah. So is there one, is there one more events? I think there's one more around show about. Oh, I don't, I don't know if we have that. Oh, do we have that? The show event? I'm not seeing it in the develop branch at the moment. Did we create that? Do you see it? Oh, I think yeah. for, some, oh, for some reason I'm on. I'm kind of on show that. Not at yeah. that. I was on. A, I was on a tree. For some reason here, I don't know why. There's something annoying with the way they've named these things. It's like not consistent. Sometimes it's singular and sometimes it's plural. Uh, uh, well, I think we named these ones, if you mean the difference between show event and list list events, because the show event is should be singular. Singular, right? Right, right it should be singular. But when you say there's something annoying about the, the way that they've named these things, you mean the way that some other website, one developers have named the features? 
Yeah, like and also just like custom errors, you see. Like I that's not and that's not a typo on my part. This custom errors is one word. Right, right, right. Oh yeah, I think it actually is like Yes, in, yes. So. I mean I th I think there's there is uh, and I think that I think that's one of the things if you have a lot of part-time people, you know, particularly if they're in the novice area and bring them in on a project and you know, I think it takes a very it takes a very very keen eye on the part of a, the project manager to ensure that they you know there is sort of like consistency in the the naming of things, uh, and I think even even with the best efforts, I mean, I, I I've tried to be kind of like keep my eye on the ball and local support, and it's it it you know, um, it's far from where I'd like it like it to be. Um, But yes, and the, the the interesting question with many of these things is like, wh when is the time to start making little changes like that? I noticed, you know, in Brian's um, pull request for the Ruby two point three upgrade, he also, you know, I mean, he we, we in one of the recent, uh, possibly one of the events features that we'd added, we had done given and 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 rather than given when and then kind of thing, which would be better. So he made that change, and it was in his pull request. And it's kind of like absolutely, it's a change that's that's needed. But it's kind of, and obviously he, he's done it then as he's just been like reviewing and looking at different things and seen it and fixed it. Um, but I think it's also, I don't know that that it, it's maybe dangerous in pull requests to be just throwing in other stuff that needs fixing. But then, if one takes that policy, when is the time when that other stuff gets fixed? So, right, when does it actually get fixed? Well, and I think uh, ideally, in between other pull requests, I think is the is the thing. I think there there there's. I, I, I would say that you you know you, if you're working on tasks, you've got to try and stay focused on that task. But then when you get to the and, and you know, although, although that said, there's always the danger that you can like right, we can't bother with the next refactoring task. But um, I was I, I don't know. We, I was very pleased with the refactoring and the, for some, within the scrums feature that we worked on that we had those initial failures and the refactoring of the step definition that we did there to make it uh, simpler. I was very pleased with. I mean, I guess the interesting thing now is given that we're not seeing the the error, I guess we're not under pressure to investigate this particular one that failed in the documents feature, the 167. Um, yeah, I know. I know. Or, or at least I feel like if we can get this thing finished, then we can look at that again when it next comes up. Yeah, uh, with with uh, having got all of this stuff. Okay, so so uh, yeah, do you want a pong on the last one, and I'll do the hookups. Or okay, I mean, once this finishes, I'll commit. And... Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking that there was a complex merge to do, but actually, no. Uh, but yeah, so in particular, if we can finish this before lunch, then we have some. Uh, some of this new with the show of that, there's some caches in the YouTube pictures. One. Should we look at them or just run it again? Well, well I, I would do from the command. I would just do more and copy and paste. Do it on the command line. I, I think, like, just where you are there. If you type the word more and then space and then copy and paste the first YouTube YAML thing in. Uh, no, no, we'll not. Yeah, or, or type it out like that if you want. I, I would I would copy and paste it myself, but the um, I think what we'll see is that this is another request to the this this YouTube ID thing. Yeah. Um, so when we ran it in batch, they appeared, but but then when they're run separately, it didn't. Yeah, and that that's what I'm. It feels like there's some kind of like factory girl database cleaner issue there, huh. that, or something. Because, I mean, this like. This ID, YT video ID one two five, I'm sort of assuming must come from our side. I mean, it's it's much too low a an ID. Anyway, why do we what, file some kind of bug with this? Or I don't. I, well, I don't think so. I I would add add and because um, I think what we've seen in the past here is that once we've added it, it's then it's right. Then but it's you don't want to file well, something so too. A ticket to investigate this in the future could do. 
Uh, I, I, I would I would commit and push up first before you make the ticket. But. Uh, actually run them again and confirm that. Uh, I was hoping that you'd push them up first. Why don't you pu push them up so I can finish working on the hookup thing and I can, yeah, excellent. Yeah, this is the events features, yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, you could open a ticket to say we should look at, um, well, or wh why those appear in batch when they don't uh, individually, and is that related to... Um, was data, is it related to factory called database truncation or is it something completely different? Um, so here, if I do git pull 806, uh, type, type an origin first. Okay. And then I've got that and I'll run BC. Let's check my status. BC locally. And then, right, so we've got hookups, features, hookups. And, and then, uh, so the two hookups is hookups active dot feature. Um, excuse me. Um, so we need a features. I've already created the hookups directory on my local machine. Uh, new file. So this so is either open that ticket. Cool. Oops, active feature. Let's put VCR in there. Um, still doing the main thing. So the events is all back in there. VCR, 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 VCR all of them. Um, new, 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 new. hookups feature, so that's about Hangouts. Yeah, I'm continuing through the um, Implementing Domain Driven Design uh, book, which is interesting that the, the example project they're talking about is people trying to build kind of like the equivalent of a pivotal tracker system, all in Agile. Really? Um, I mean, what's it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. Yeah, I, 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 although I, I, like, I sort of like it. I get it's it's in, incredible how how many different ways someone can say it depends. Like, yeah, it just on and on. It was, it was the same towards the end of the domain driven design ones. Is that they can say, you know, maybe some of this, but you know, it all. You know, use your own judgment, right? and it's kind of like, you know, do, do you actually really have anything to say here apart from it depends? Could we just sum it down that it all depends? I don't know. Um, so we've also got these this info om, omni auth. This is a new thing there. Well, uh, there are certain books where there are hard like rules that are presented. Hmm. Novices. Or intermediate people can take those rules literally. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh and no. I, I, craft just by following those rules, kind of religiously. Oh yeah. No, no. I mean, I, I, I like Sandy Metz's book is kind of like that. Like if you follow. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. And I think it's very important to say it depends. I, and I think that the 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 um, absolutely, you don't want people to follow them religiously. But I guess it gets to. to but then, kind where, of like, I, but I think for like a um, beginner. Like a beginner doesn't necessarily have the judgment, you know what I mean? You know, it's hard. No, absolutely. But I, but I think that the thing is, in some I ways, think that giving them kind of like a hard and fast rule can be absolutely. good. I, 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 it can be good for them, maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess I what I'm more is what I'm wondering is that when there's parts of books where the levels of the the the, the whatever's going on is at such an abstract level that it's almost like you know. 
it's so difficult to pin down what's actually being suggested and it, it all depends anyway it's almost like can one gain any valuable advice and i've just i've just read five paragraphs talking about these two approaches that are that are at such an abstract level you know that i could interpret a given system as doing one or the other in different ways and yeah. then which approach i'm leaning towards depends anyway you know you know yeah. what i mean it's uh Although, although, although similarly, of course, it, it you know it, it may come down more to the problem that I've failed to comprehend the necessary difference between the two approaches that being that are being suggested. Um, uh, what were they in particular? Well, I think there's it, like for example, towards the end of the domain driven design, it's talking about different ways of having your teams coordinate with each other. You know, whether they're using shared kernel or um, you know. APIs oh. and ubic, you know ubiquitous language and dividing up things into turn you know the different bounded like contexts. how the different teams working on different bounded contexts and 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 things yeah. like like that I mean you know uh, I mean I, I think that the, the 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 big thing that I'm sort of pulling away from all of it is the suggestion that you know you should be really careful with the language in in your project and the parts of the project that you're you're in there and I think. I mean, partly why I talk about this. I think, you know, uh, if your language wanders, and so you've got, like, for example, here in the acceptance test, we're talking about a hookup, which is referred yeah, to. Yeah, I think I said that. I, I, yeah. That's kind of what I took away a little bit. Yeah. From the initial book. Because right. last year, I, I think I actually read it last winter. Right. And, uh, Rachel was like, oh, add this user that does this. And I was like, well, what do you actually want it to be called? Right, right. What is that called? And she was like, oh, it doesn't really matter. And I was like, no, it actually, it's mm -hmm. important for us that you actually choose a name that uh, makes Maybe. sense. Right, right. And she was like, oh, okay, well. And then that's where site admin came from. Right, right. Yes, I, I think I think it um, it's it's important to get sort of consistency there. Um, yeah, I mean, like so here we have you know we've got hookups and they're referred to as like event instances somewhere else, and then they're like hangouts somewhere else, and they're you know it, I think it's confusing for people coming in, and and maybe there are multiple concepts that do need to be you know I think there I think there might be different. Oh uh, well, indeed, but then 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 I think we, one needs to get clear about what the relationship between them is um, yeah. okay uh, da -da -ba 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 -ba. this is the uh, cops pending <laughs> and then it's interesting, like, like we've got like they're in a hookups fault and well we've got this great event <laughs> yeah um, oh okay we have a failed step. Hooks, hookups pending. Let's. We've got no other new stuff. I have not put VCR at the top of this one. We've got. Did we have a hookup steps that we had not yet pulled in? Well, hangout steps. Uh, features. Step definitions, yeah. Um, no. And fifteen. Uh, okay. So what's it failing on? It says it's expected to find text from seven to nine thirty in this page, and it's not finding it. So that's not a failed missing step. It's 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 not. I was just I was just kind of thrashing. Um and also because I haven't, I haven't put VCR in, but let's listen. So I've got VCR in that one. That's hookup active, hookups pending. Display existing pending events. Hmm. So I think this is 
This is hookups pending. This hookups pending. Yeah, and it's just the. It's a, there's nothing in the, the cash. Um, it's relying on the following events exist. It's expecting to see the seven to nine thirty thing, which is seven to nine thirty. That that is two and a half hours. So it's one hundred and fifty. So it's corresponding to like hook yeah, hookup one. So it's expecting to see the time output from hookup one. And it's not seeing it for some reason. Um, hmm. I mean, I guess I also wonder, should we should we add back in that um, capybara snapshot thing? Yeah, I mean, for right now, maybe. Uh, I was just, is this... Uh, Capybara. So, which cube, which scenario in particular is it failing on? Uh, uh, it's line fifteen. Scenario display existing pending events. Uh, so now we've got this. But in. not seeing hookup one. It seems it saw hookup one, but it, yeah, it, it didn't see the time for hookup uh, one. Seven to nine thirty. Okay. And is there a... So in principle, we can require, uh, we can just pull that back into Cucumber, uh, I guess through our M environment there. So if we pull back in screenshots. So close. Yes. I guess we've also. I mean, I guess the the the. the I'm, I'm, oh, I'd love to have this done. I just. I would like to. I just love to see the failures from the thing. So expected to find this. HTML screenshot. Oh, how how do we get the GIF screenshots then? I'm not so interested in HTML. Is there a GIF in there? NG. Hmm. Okay. Well. Anyway. What was the other one that used to? I mean, basically, that's saying like showing like no active hookups whatsoever. Okay. Do you want to go in and to the bugger? And yeah, I guess it could be. I'm just gonna. Uh, okay. I'm just seeing some um, interesting random failures on one of our things. One for. Uh, project features 185, but now also for users skills feature 25. Where? Uh, it's on the CI. Oh, really? Um, yeah. They just mm -hmm. failed randomly? Well, uh, but by the looks of it, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like the latest. I mean, I, I, obviously, as, as we ping and pong backwards and forwards, it's running lots of different issues for us. Uh, yeah, I guess I could go into the debugger. I was just, there's like HTML screenshot, and I, th I thought that this thing also had the feature for doing like a, uh, like, a, for doing like an, an, an image rather, because the HTML we can do like save and show me the page. Uh -huh. um, is there not some configuration here to like tell it to do? Uh, Capybara. It said something screenshot, didn't it? Say again. I said it said screenshot somewhere on that page. Oh yeah, I mean it's. Oh. Well. I just remember that it has. I mean, it, but it's created an HTML screenshot, and okay. the, the setup that you know previously that they had was that it would not only do an HTML screenshot; it would do like a, a GIF image of yeah. it. 
which since the style sheets don't load in the HTML one, that was, I always thought, much more useful. And so I was just... Uh, I mean, I... I guess one should possibly look at um, what have we got in the environment for here? So we've got capybara screenshot slash cucumber. I guess I should just do a search in the database for anything else related to screenshot. Um, Cucumber there, there, there. Yeah. I'm not seeing any config there that would... And we've got the basic steps that we can save one. Well, I guess it's not worth, I guess I say, it's probably just get on the debugger. Uh, so we're here. Have I got have I got the de a debug set and then I debug? Yeah, okay. But it's sort of it's looking like I would have thought that there needed to be a kind of like a time cop here for it to, to be hmm. This is like pending events. That's that's like events in the future, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's all repeat all, and never repeats. The repeats. That's interesting. Why that was passing? Yeah. Can can I see the page body here? Yeah. But so. There's the person. Custom menu event dashboard. Yeah, I mean, what we what we could see active hookups, pending hookups. I mean, there's just nothing there. I don't know if there was some other thing uh, that we would have that would. Uh, so there's in the controller in the hookups controller. Mm -hmm. That's in the hookups controller, right? Do you think this is hitting the hookups controller? You're looking at, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the hookups pending feature at the moment. I'm not looking at a controller. No, but I mean, it's actually ultimately hitting the hookups controller. Right? One, one assumes so. Yeah, we've got event pending hookups. So there's event dot pending underscore hookups is yeah. being set in the controller, in the yeah. index. Controller. Right, right. So if there's nothing in there, you know. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I, I guess we could be running the... Um, you could run it and just verify that there's no, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'll just, I stupidly just started the other thing there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, yeah, I can verify that there's, no, I mean, it's funny that it should be, I don't know if we have a default, what I was just looking for, is there a default thing in, um, what's that one where we've got the environment uh, of the features set up to, to make it a certain date by default? Um, so what have we got here? We've got the env.rb options. So it goes through the event and it looks for category pair programming. Mm -hmm. So hookup is apparently a pair programming session mm. as we're using it. I'll start it dot last hangout. So if it's not started and it's not expired without starting and there's a on line 37 in the event model, there's a reference to time.now.utc. Right. Uh, interestingly, so that implies that somehow it's time dependent. I mean, the event pending hookups is actually showing me the um, hookup, was showing me hookup, hookup zero. Really? Yeah. 
And what is being expected to be shown in the? Well, it seems to be the stuff to do with hookup. And it was no, this was an, an array. Hookup one. And actually, both hookup zero and hookup one um, are uh, being shown. I mean, uh, the hookups are yeah, so hookup from. So the, 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 the two of them, and then it's like at least checking that it should see hookup one. It should have should appear, but yeah, I would just sort of say like these are all in the past. Uh, so I don't, know, I don't know how it's okay. I mean, follow your well, so it's we've got it's, and then event, pending hookups, pending hookups, hookups each. If you type dot instance end time on that hookup. Yeah, I, I will. Do, I'll just. I'll get. I, I stupidly run it on the. I'm just going to leave it running on the batch there and, and look at this. But the pending ones, it says if it's not started and it's not expired without starting. I mean, I can. I could step through. The the, the funny thing though, thing though, for for all of the logic on this is that. Um. Yeah, you got time now. You is that. This is passing in the main branch, so right. There's presumably some kind. I, I, I would have expected this feature to have kind of like a time cop thing in it or something, um, which I'm not seeing. Did I, did I miss out some? So this is how good. which is why I'm sort of trying to find something in the um, environment variables that would indicate that uh, the time had been played with. So support, because we've got all these different hooks, but none of them are being used in here. Uh, mm hmm. Hmm. I mean, there's other things like we've got, like require DeLorean. Hmm. It's other things that we haven't pulled in yet. Sorry, that's taking longer than I'd hoped. Yeah. Well, you're saying it's actually showing up. Well, it's it's showing like here when I stopped it there and I did event event dot pending hookups. It's kind of a, 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 a sorry, I was technical. Hello. 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 Joy. Okay. Um. Uh. Uh, rats, come on, brain. Why has this got... Is this stuck? Still thinking about it. Um, yeah, and there was... Articles, sponsor medal. There's got to be a better generic solution for displaying this. Stuff. But yeah, it's got I mean, active hookups, pending hookups, and after the pending hookups, div, div. No. Okay. The, the pending hookups, it, it sort of implies that that's things in the future, right? Yeah. It's getting all of the hookups, and for each one of them, God, this is ridiculous code. Okay. What's this? How can we get rid of this? This thing. Oh. Mm. <laughs> it's the only place I find that exact thing is in our own 
Travis builds for um, website one, which of course we're on semaphore now. Why is that all now running so painfully slowly? I thought that was just gonna, this is the, the boiling frog thing. Um, So if events, let's follow the so hookups controller creates at pending hookups and then in the views for hookups uh, here we've got if hand pending hookups is present then it would start to deplet. De so clearly My whole computer slowed down. What's what's going on? If maybe just because I'm waiting for it, but it feels like the BC is taking a lot longer to run this time. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like it's taken a long time. I think. Oh, screw it. Okay. Uh, I think it was almost finished. Uh, okay. No, and there's nothing else. Let's run the individual. So there's that one. We are what did I change it in? So here, so yeah, if I do event dot pending hookups. Oh. So yeah. we're getting nothing there. Nothing there. I just did it before on this one. This one worked here, but it was maybe um Maybe it happened on a different test. Like I had the when I ran it in batch. Okay, so event pending hookups is is absent. But so I can I, I guess. And it's funny that I get event pending hookups off. Like that, it's even an event thing. It's like oh, so it's self hookups. But so I guess I can look at event hookups, and we can see yeah, hookup zero, hookup one. They've been created. They've been created and yeah, created and updated in 2016. The start date time is in 2015. So that should all work. What's just strange there is that that how can that test pass in the main I mean, system? Uh, I don't know. Um, but pre presumably only through some manipulation of time. I, w I would guess. Um, uh. So do you want to add uh, time travel? That seems a sensible thing to do, doesn't it? Uh, Make this explicit. Yeah. So what have we got from these? So time travel, I guess, like, it's like time travel there and makes those things. So... Yeah, because all of these ones have got given the date is this. That would seem to be. That seems, I don't know if it's like, I didn't accidentally remove that one line of code, did I? No, I'm looking on develop, and it's not there. No. So here now, event pending hookups. Yep. Screen. Okay. Well, that would that would seem to be. I mean, you could put it in the background, you know, if you wanted to. Oh it's yeah, well, indeed. Same thing on all the steps. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Oh, go on. Uh, okay, so we run that one. Uh, no, it doesn't. Not in the same place. Uh, oops, it's on line sixteen. 
Bro, it would be nice to be, just be able to like tell it to run the first or the second or the third feature rather than having to specify the line number. But anyway, okay. Yeah, and the next build. So it feels like we've clearly still got the the intermittent failure issue is still there somehow. At least on CI for some reason. Yeah. I mean, local seems to have gotten a lot better. Yeah. I mean, I get, and I guess some of those other things, or for those individual things, may be related to timeouts. Uh, yeah, problems. probably on CI. The um, is a, probably a virtual machine. Yeah. Um, Not as powerful or whatever. I mean, is there? There might be a way to configure it to have a heart a longer time out on CI. That oh, there is, yeah. Um, I'm just going to add ads back in hookup, which is okay. So I'm going to push this up, and um, so you've got it. Um, okay. Um, and I guess I'm just, well, I'll run BC myself here. So yeah, you want to pull it on. So I, I think then the only, I mean, just reviewing the pull request here. Um, I think the only thing is we have this discus thing, which I'm just, I'm just tempted to um, uncomment and run and see, see what happens. Uh, But yeah, in principle, we could get this merged in then in front of Brian's 2.3 thing so that at least we've got a, uh, and at least I feel like, I, you know, we've got a, a clean uh, Cucumber config that I've now seen every part of and the bits that don't seem to be necessary and are not, don't seem to contribute to anything are now not pulled in. Uh, so that's... Uh, no, we're getting. You've got the thirty-one has failed, thirty-two has passed, thirty-three has failed. Oh, this one is a gem load failure. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go back to the. Okay, here. Okay, so it comes back in as, these are our features. So we've got, advanced site search feature, article mode feature, articles feature, basic layout feature, challenge activity feature, custom errors feature, dashboard stats feature, the discus feature is documents feature, event countdown feature. Um, Create events, edit events, list events, show events. Follow feature. Um, the hangout feature, hire me, who got active, pending. And then we have all of the things, and I think I've I think there's a slick way to see which ones were deleted. Yeah. I guess I could be clicking the. I mean, I think we're we're doing, though, also quite a uh, a lot of deletions of the. Um, I forgot what it's called now. Uh, the rep the old request cache and moving it into a new location, which is making it. Um, let's see. Let's see what's going on. There's a diff filter that you can set to. Oh, diff options here. Diff dash filter equals D. Mm hmm. So I think if we were potentially. But I think I can. I think I can see now. If you diff across the two branches, right? Like from your command line. Mm hmm. Can you do that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I just, I'm just gonna look at the. Just looking at the last. Bit. Diff, 
you, you, you could do the same on you could do the same diff on urines, right? Look, here it is. Your screen's not shared. Let me share it. So I diffed get diff develop. So it's diffing with my local develop branch. Uh huh. And I have a diff filter equals D. Okay, so it shows you only the files that were deleted. Potentially stash dash summary. Uh, oh, cool. Um, so that gives me a list of everything that was deleted. Right. With dash dash summary. Cool. Oh, we should, we'll post that. Post that syntax into the chat room. But yeah, so the, we remove the position of the. But yeah, uh, the the. The rec cache, but but yeah, if, if there's any other features in there, but I, I think it's pretty much it's that disk. Is it? I mean, I guess I'm just. I'll post it in the pull request. I guess. Oh, okay, yeah, that's good too. Uh, I mean, the interesting thing to me just is one about that. Will would the would the discus features actually pass? Um, or should we just leave it out entirely? But let's. I need to know. I have to know. Uh, features new file. This cuss dot feature. Uh, these scenarios and step notions are outdated and needs to be refactored. So it looks like discus feature was deleted. Yeah. And the rest so far are all rec caches. Yeah. I'm just going to go through and see. Yeah. Then uh, I we deleted some step definitions. Discus steps. Document steps was not pulled in. Interesting. Guide yeah. steps was not pulled in. I think some of those have been created. Maybe they've been given different names. Uh, well, then we should fix those names. So is there a, a, a document step? Steps? Document steps? I mean... Or something like it? We've got document steps. So pluralize that, the documents steps. Okay. I was just going to... Um, just fix yeah. this right now. Okay. So. okay. Yeah. Well, and I guess I'm just looking at the discus feature, and I'm just looking at it, and it's kind of like that. Just even the, the comments suggest that it that it that it will just not work. So I think I'm just. Uh, what gonna... about guides? Guide steps? Is there guide yeah. steps? Uh. Okay. So do, let me just do do, to document steps. Let's rename that to documents steps. Yeah. Uh. There's nothing to do with guide. There's no guide steps, and it hasn't been needed by this. Pro there's projects which I will refactor to um, projects. Yeah, and scrums. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pluralize that. Oh god, this is this bloody thing where you have to press it again to actually do the refactor. Okay. What about tabs? Go on. Yeah, tab tab is also so tab and scrum need to be pluralized. Okay. Um, and then there's a support. I'll let you do that now. Oh, do the refactor, please. Tab steps, refactor, rename. So tab is tabs steps. Yes. Okay. So that's... And then there's a exit code. There's a support. In yeah, the well, folder, there's a mixing. Exit yeah, mix. well, and we ha we haven't needed that, and I suspect that that's like an old cucumber thing, and we just don't. And then it. there's two VCR fixtures. So that's yeah, I don't think we worry about that. As a site admin, charge a user. YAML. Yeah, I, I imagine that it's uh, named or something. We've we still I, I I've changed the location of those fixtures. I think. Oh okay. Yeah. Like I, I so put, that's, it. that's all that's and the rest are all rec caches. Yeah. So I will, I'll just what I'll do there is I'll uh, just push up that um, git commit minus am fixes uh, some misnamed steps. Uh, 
Well, I guess we're sort of we're sort of done for the time being then. Um, Did you push it? Yeah, I pushed it. Um, just uh, yeah. Oh. I mean, I think I think having done this, yeah, we we have this in, and then you know, as and when other intermittent things come come on, we'll, we'll have to like l look at those individually. Huh. So it's saying that still delete it. Uh but maybe it's not I don't know. Yeah, you you do put get pull the thing into your local one. Get pull origin um, approach. There you go. Uh documents. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so there's so viscous steps and guide steps, or which, which were apparently. Okay. So did, 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 I mean? So I mean the discus feature. So I guess we're done. Yeah, I think so. Oh, and there's an asset missing now. Uh, well, no, I think that was that was deleted because that's the I, I that 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 maker sidebar that should be missing. Yeah, that that's that changed the sponsor. Changed the sponsor from makers to craft Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, maybe we can sit down with uh, Raul later on, and we'll get this pulled in. Do you want to take the work in progress label off? Of yeah. yeah, please do, if, if, if you were there on the labels. I was just running um, BEC again locally for me uh, to see. Ready, ready. Oh, and I think please check is the one that we... Please check. Yeah. I mean, I guess I can take that from my coffee somewhere. Yeah. I thought I had... Um... And we could rebase it and squash it all into one commit. Yeah, well, or we can use that. We can actually do that via the GitHub interface now. Oh, that's nice. So that what, let us set authors and everything. I'm not sure about that actually. Uh, and of course, we're yeah. Okay. Well, it's green. It's green and clean on my side. I guess I'll. I'll be online again in an hour, and then it's another hour before the um, the kickoff. So I'll catch, right. you, catch you in a bit. All right, bye. All right, thanks. Bye for now.